Good afternoon, Internet family. Um, all right, I'm going to try to see if I can um, control this a little bit better in the stream manager rather than in stream yard, but I'll probably be going back and forth. <clears throat> Okay, so today's language y'all. So, okay, last week we talked about um, Persian Islam language um i mean you learned a little bit about persia and stuff this week i'm going to do something a little bit different i was going to continue talking about that then i got to thinking about the timeline and stuff and um languages in general and how we communicate with each other, the different ways that we communicate with each other. Um, and um, one of the topics that um, comes up a lot is um, like an unspoken language. And some people call it like telepathy or intuition, or maybe it's just body language or eye movements, um, maybe sounds, um, pretty much everything other than spoken. And in every spoken language, there is a secondary or third language within that language because you have the emotions that are behind it and you also have the thought process. So you have logic and emotion both sides of the brain working simultaneously uh, to create an expression and of self basically, or expression of said things um, or topics. So um, I'm playing around with this game called blink. I thought it was kind of interesting. Um, has nothing to do with languages. It just kind of triggered a thought for me. Um, the game is uh, called Blink, and it's uh, to basically the object of the game is to be the first player out of cards. 60 symbol cards. Um, shuffle cards, deal them face down, form two equal draw piles. Place one draw pile in front of each player. Place top card from each draw pile face down between the players. These cards should be placed next to each player, each other, so they are accessible to both players. Each player takes a tap, a the top three cards from his or her draw pile to form a hand. Players may look at the cards in their hand. Uh, playing the game, players simultaneous, simultaneously turn over the cards as they're placed in the center of the table and the be game begins without taking turns. Players race to play the cards from their hand face up on either of the center piles. To play a card, it must match at least one characteristic, shape, color, or count of the card on which it is played. As cards are played, players refill their own hand by taking cards from their own draw pile. Players may have up to three cards in their hand at any time. The game continues until one of the players is completely out of cards from his or her hand and draw pile. And first com player completely out of cards wins blank. And this is how uh, it looks on the instructions. I don't know if you guys can see that very well. But that's how it's supposed to look. Player cannot play with more than one card at a time or occasion when player match either of the top cards. Anyways, so what caught my attention on this game... As there's no numbers, it's just symbols, right? So I got to thinking, just like a regular deck of cards, it's just got symbols, a certain set of symbols and a certain set of numbers. And anybody can play cards if they understand how to play it, right? 
or have the ability to play it. So um, I was thinking of one language for all of us, no matter any age, no matter any race or level of finance. It's one, one known language. And because <clears throat> in the Bible, it says before the Tower of Babel, that we all did speak one language, which scientifically speaking, if the world was all one landmass and we all came from one area, then it stands to, to say that most likely the people would have all spoke one language or one similar language and it would have branched off. Um, as a baseline of DNA knowledge, our, our ancestors give us our knowledge from our past, our instincts and our um, intuition and stuff like that. Our ancestors give us that through our DNA. So we already have that in, an, in language instilled in us. We just have to access it. So accessing key points in your own DNA will, or even through genealogy could possibly show you strengths and weaknesses in the family genealogy. But um, the known language in the DNA, that's something that's subconscious. You can't, I don't know if someone could consciously activate your DNA unless it was through some kind of like frequency. Um, and even then runs the risk of deteriorating or messing with your own personal frequency because we all have our own frequencies um, and our own wavelengths, our own mind wavelengths. And that is something that I don't real, I don't think people realize like how much electronics and stuff like that affect our own wavelengths and how it's like, we're literally killing ourselves like every day with our food even in the oxygen, the water, our surroundings, we're completely surrounded by chemicals at all times. Um, there's microplastics and everything now. And it's just, you know, it, it's just mind boggling to me. Anyway, so <clears throat> back to what I was saying. Uh, being able to have one language for all of us is a really intriguing concept because we're, like I said yesterday, um, we're not just uh, locally, statewide, nationally, countrywide, internationally, worldwide. We're not just that anymore. We're now interstellar. We're now going to be on multiple planets at the same time. Um, so making sure that the crossover from this planet to the next planet, I think is, is kind of imperative too. And I hope that they really, I mean, I'm pretty sure that they've walked through all the possibilities of it, but like, I really hope that they're making sure that, you know, what is getting transferred. It's like Noah's Ark, you know, like what do you take to the new land, so to speak, you know, what do you take with you? What qualities do you take with you? What knowledge do you take with you? Um, how do you want to govern said new world? Because we don't even have a way to govern our own world <laughs> properly. So it's it's interesting to me. It's like we're taking like kind of like a pioneer's aspect into the, the space race, so to speak. And like, I'm just wondering what is going to get transferred to the new planets and like what's going to 
it's just intriguing to me. So like what languages are we going to transfer? Because we have, we don't even know all of the languages that are on earth right now. So with an incomplete list going to another planet, inhabiting said planet, um, I mean, you would, it was a conversation that Jeff and I had yesterday. It was, uh, really intriguing. It kind of like blew my mind a little bit because of, I've spoke about it in the stream before my concept of time travel and, and other planets and DNA and all this other stuff. And, um, so he brought to my attention, uh, that there was already a pre-existing cognitive awareness of this said conversation that I thought was our original idea. So <laughs> I was on the right track though. So that's what counts. <laughs> um, and I cannot feel like I'll have to ask Jeff what the name of that book was, but, um, or the artist, uh, but he, it was talking about the same concepts as I was talking about. So I, I just think it's really interesting. Uh, so These cards that I was talking about, I know I'm kind of bouncing all over the place today. Um, lots on my mind. So these cards are oddly color coded, like not a typical card coloring choice, which was intriguing to me also. Um, and then the shapes are specific shapes that are very, very close to that of Zener cards, if you guys know what I'm talking about. And one game that I really liked playing with um, some of the kids in the, the area was like an intuition game that you can play with cards, regular cards, and you can actually play it with this too. Um, really any card. So <clears throat> basically what you're doing is is you're flipping the card up so that way the other person can't see it. And you're looking at the card, right? And you're looking at the person. You know what the card is showing. The other person doesn't know what the card is showing. But they have to use their intuition to tell you what's on the card. So it's good practice. It's fun. It's a fun little game thing that you can do with like, you know, anybody. Um, and, and you don't have to use a whole deck, but like you can go through a, a, a certain set amount of cards or whatever and, and just practice it. See how good you are at like guessing. That's what they call it. Right. In society guessing. So, <laughs> um, so guess what this card is based on the knowledge that you have that each one of these cards has only a shape, only a color. And I'll go ahead, I'll help you out with the colors here because I think it's only yellow, gray, brown. No, oh, wait, there's more colors than I thought. Green, red, blue. I think that's it. Yeah, the gray and the brown threw me off for colors for card game um yeah i think those are the only colors so yellow brown at least pick a color yellow brown blue red green or gray what color is it what color is this card not what you're looking at what's on the other side or a shape I think there's stars, lightning bolts, teardrops, triangles, and I think I said lightning bolts, stars. Oh, there's three stars. In a row. Okay, never mind. There's multiple stars in a row. All right, maybe not. Anyway, so <laughs> tell, tell me what color. I'll, I'll go ahead and tell you. It's stars. There's four stars on this card, but what color are they? I told you the colors. Oh, okay. Hey, 
I'm a cosmetology student and I was wondering if you had a favorite treatment to get a salon, hair, nails, skin, etc. Oh, okay. Uh, I like getting my nails done. I don't have them done right now. These are my natural nails, but I do like getting my nails done. Um, I've not ever had a skin treatment at a salon. I just use stuff at home. <laughs> um, hair. I'll be honest with you. Every time I've ever gone to a salon to get my hair done, it never came out the way I wanted it to. It just never did. I've always like had better luck cutting my hair and dyeing my hair at home. Um, I actually had a lady compliment me on my hair the other day. Um, when we were at the gym. Oh yeah. Pedicures are fun. Okay. So for those of you who have not really ever had your toes or feet messed with and you go and get a pedicure done, just be aware that you're going to feel sensations that are going to feel certain ways that will be maybe controllable. So, <laughs> Yeah, if you have a good pedicurist like I do, she holds your foot. <laughs> <coughs> so, yeah. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> um, good luck with that. Yes. I've gotten better over time, though. To be fair, over time, you start to get more used to it, but it's still... I still pull my foot back a little like, oh God, and I have to like cover my face. It's one of those things. Like I can't, I just, I'll start laughing. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Oh no. I'm sorry to hear that. Archaeo soup. Is that the string? Yeah. Okay. Archaeo soup. Yeah. Men and women both go to get their manicure, pet, many petties done, manicures and pedicures done. It's not uncommon to see a man in there getting his feet done. Actually, I like, I prefer it. I prefer for a man to go and get his self taking, you know, self care is like a priority for me. So, Self-care for my partner is, uh, I like that in a partner, so, or in anybody, really. <laughs> Somebody takes good care of themselves, you know, that's a good thing. So, I understand certain situations you can't, and many pennies are expensive, but, as <clears throat> one lady said, she was going to charge me $120 to, to get a mani petty done, and I was like, oh, okay, that's good. Because when I used to go to Mimi, it was just $120 just to get my nails done. So <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, great. They're going to look like that. I don't know if Wonderful. So <laughs> don't mind me. I'm a pain in the ass today, evidently. Um, so, yeah. That's another thing with languages is going into a salon and people speaking other languages. They now have a lot of technology that is language. Um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Translate translators that are real time. So go into the nail salon with that. Uh, what is it? Pixel bud or whatever it's called. Um, or the glasses. I think it is that they translate to the Google glasses. Um, I don't know. It's like spyware. It's kind of cool. Because then you can like listen to what they're actually saying. Even though you have no idea anything about that language. So it's kind of fun. Sometimes you're probably better off not knowing what they're saying. <laughs> or maybe it's not even as interesting as you thought it was. Maybe they're talking about what they're going to make for supper or something. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. 
there's several um, different things out now that has the translate, which again, goes back to <clears throat> like when, with us going to other planets and, and, you know, we still don't even know all the languages that are here on earth uh, to translate on earth is still in process. So to translate, to go to another planet, I think it's like six months from here to Mars, something like that. The girl that's getting trained to go to live on Mars permanently is very young. I think she is, last I heard she was like 15, but that was like a couple years ago. So I want to say 15 to 20 years old right now. So... Are we bringing people from Earth to Mars to inhabit it? Is it going to be like some kind of like VIP section of the universe that only certain people get to go? Or certain DNA types get to go? Because it's my understanding, and this goes back to, I haven't read that book that he's talking about. Oh, honey. What? What was the name of that artist with the book that we were talking about yesterday? Um, about uh, DNA and uh, other planets and tra traveling in space and stuff. But you told me his name and I cannot for the life of me remember. You showed me a picture of the book. Oh, uh, it's the name of that book was called The Twelfth Planet and it was by Sacred Sa 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 Science. The Twelfth like, Planet? The The Twelfth Planet. He's He was German. And he, he was um, a, a he was not just a philosopher or uh, he was a, uh, a top respected um, archaeologist and all and all that. But he translated what was the interpretation of where the origin of man came from from the Sumerian tablets, which talks about the Anakis and everything. But he wrote several books. But it's called the Twelfth Planet. The Twelfth Planet. Yeah, okay. but his name is German, so I don't even know if I'm pronouncing it correctly. I half the time when I'm reading like AP and News, he, he I cannot the, pronounce letter it. Letter S and Zacharias or something. I don't know. Okay, well I'll look it up. But yeah, I okay. I just didn't know the name of it, and I was trying to tell them about it because yeah, I've talked about friend, it in the stream. Yeah, before. He, he wrote that probably about in the uh, early '80s. Oh, he, okay, so it's like way before. Yeah, but he uh, he's established himself because he wrote several other books that followed in behind it. That's important back it up. It's really, like I said, it's really intriguing because, like I, like I told you, it's kind of shocking to me to find out that somebody else had wrote about this decades ago, whereas here I am thinking that it's, like, original thought. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, yeah, like I told you, at least I was on the right track. But at the same time, is like, you know, James I've been Wilson, talking about yeah. this on the stream for years. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they, they would just uh, think that you borrow from his ideas and trying to support your own with his. I don't know. No, I, and that's the thing is I, I don't know where a lot of these ideas are coming from, but evidently, well, like I said, proof. I was on the right yeah. track. Yeah, he had uh, evidence. It's he, okay to not to be not to be the original source, as long as if you are part of it that you're continuing it on a, on the right path because that's one specific thing can take multiple paths. Same thing with uh, people stealing content. They're only going to get 10% of your content. E even if they steal it, because the idea is original. You, your mindset and your perspective of it is only going to be what other people portray of it. Right. Oh, so. Yeah. That sounds reasonable. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would go with that thought. That's that's enlightening. I mean, it's encouraging. Plus, you know, I, I like that. It's, yeah, on the right track. All right, track. Let's see where that going on. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm looking at this bug spray. I was trying to see about this. Uh, oh, okay. Well, I like you being on the stream with me. Um, okay. 
So I forgot what I was talking about now. Oh, okay. So <clears throat> going back to that book of talking about the stream and how, you know, the, the DNA time travel to other planets and all this stuff with the languages, which languages are we going to be teaching in the new world? What, what are we bringing with us to the new world? Because even on, even on our own planet right now, everyone is trying to change up the history of the world. So when you're trying to mumble jumble this mixing pot of information, when you bring it to the new world, you have to make sure that it's accurate, right? Or is it going to be accurate perspective for that world? Are we going to become an enemy now because we're a different world and we have a different perspective than of the history of this world than they do? Like, is it going to cause like an inter, interstellar, interstellar war in a sense? Cause a civil war on Earth because of the secondary planet? I don't know if anybody's really thought this far. <laughs> or maybe even thought of this as a concept. I don't know. Or maybe I'm just thinking of something that's pretty common sense. I have no idea. I'm somewhere in that range, usually for everyone. Um, uh, it also depends on what your belief system is. Uh, what belief systems are going to be transferred um, because even in certain languages, their belief goes into their language. So or it, it's a part of it. So when you're transferring that language to the new planet, how would that be? received because just because we communicate it doesn't mean that somebody each person is going to receive it differently so like for example whatever i say in the stream y'all are going to re receive it in different ways y'all are going to feel certain types of ways at certain points in time in the video right <clears throat> some of you may click on my video hear my voice and be like oh hell no click off you know it's just different perspectives for each person somebody may be has downloaded all of my streams somehow and like they save every single second of my social media. I have no idea. If you do, please send me a copy. So <laughs> that's the only positive part about having a stalker. <laughs> they can send you stuff. Anyway. Um, um, but yeah, so like transferring all that stuff over um, and then each language has its own separate sets of dialects. So like, for example, for the most part in America, we are English speaking for the most part, at least as far as I'm to understand. So each area of the United States has a different way of saying the same damn thing. So <laughs> when you go to translate or transfer that, you're going to have to take all that information, all of everything, I just want y'all to think about that. I want y'all to think about how your children's children's children, the possibility of them living on another fucking planet. Okay. Like it's a very high reality right now. So <laughs> and maybe it's for the better. Maybe it needs to be that way. Maybe the Noah's Ark of the future is to take whatever is left of this planet to the next planet. Like I've been saying, government operated device the entire time. Um, and take the DNA because the DNA has the knowledge already in it. And then we have the ex exterior knowledge outside of our own existence and our own personal knowledge, which has been live streamed for the past, I don't know, 40 years or more. So, or hundred years, I have no idea. So, <laughs> um, you know, plus we have books that are now digitized our entire knowledge background has been digitized so you could take that with you everything had to be digital to transfer it the more i question about the whole languages thing makes me think about 
space. And in space right now, there is thousands of satellites. Thousands. Even a wooden one. They just put it up the other day. Go check that out. Um, and so I'm wondering, like, okay, why is there all these satellites outside of Earth if we're moving from Earth to Mars? Like, why do we have a security system on Earth? Something going to happen? Hmm? Hmm? So, especially it's looking in. So it's not looking out. Or is it? Is it looking out? I have no idea. That's sciences. So, <laughs> um, with all of this ability to translate languages, to transfer information pretty much at the speed of light, really, internet, then why can we not communicate with each other on Earth already more so than we are right now? And if that's the case, then how are we going to be able to communicate with another planet? Same as you would another country, right? In my mind. How would you uh, meet an alien? Because now, if you're from another planet, you're considered an alien. Even though you were dna raised on earth there's gonna be entire generations that have never seen earth as part of your knowledge there's entire generations right now that have never not had an electronic in their hand so think about that um, the little bit of knowledge that we do have about the planet that we live on, being able to transfer that to another planet is really mind-boggling to me, and I don't think that we are ready <laughs> for that. But then again, government, hurry up and wait process, you know. Go ahead and do it and worry about the problems and consequences later, right? Let's just go ahead and do it. What's the worst that can happen? So, <laughs> I don't know. If I end up missing one day, just say it. Probably because I won a lottery. Anyway. <laughs> um, okay. So, where was I at? Thank you, Mary. Languages. <clears throat> okay. So if you had, my another standing question is, is that if we're going to be living on other planets, is there an extension for life? I'm just saying. Um, <clears throat> if you could write a letter To your past self, your future self, your child, grandchild, or an heir of some kind. If you could write a letter to someone in the future, what would you write? Would you... Write it in your language? Would you write it in multiple languages? I mean, hieroglyphics are in, I think, one language, right? But we don't write hieroglyphic, hieroglyphics now. So being able to read the language 20, 30, 50, 100 years from now, Are they going to be able to? And if they can, if they were able to read your letter, what would it say? Would it give advice? Would you tell a deep, dark secret? Would you... 
Tell them about your past, places you've been. Would you tell them about the things that are going on in the world today? And as far as like influencers, are they going to be the leaders of the future? Because I'll be honest with you, they're going to need to sell space. So, how much change are you ready for? How much about the world do you know today? And how much can you learn in the next 24 hours? The next 12, 6 hours, the next hour while you're watching this, whenever you watch this. Because I'm live right now, but you could be watching this on my YouTube page three years from now, who knows? Remember the old saying of what goes on the internet stays on the internet? Well, what kind of media is going to go to the new world? Or the space hotel? What languages are we going to speak out there? Is there going to be a new language made for people who live in space? Is it going to be a united language like that of which I'm speaking? Something that we can all understand. Is there going to be advancements in technology so much so that we'll be able to understand telepathy? I mean, we've got AI right now that is blowing my mind. So, and it's advancing on its own. So the only way that we will be able to advance above that is to advance ourselves, right? But robots are infinite, so it's kind of hard to forget that you're a human being. <laughs> um, but And is there going to be a whole new AI language? Because, you know, you have the zeros and ones, which is computer language, right? So are we going to be able to translate properly when it self-identifies and starts giving itself lingo or slang of its own kind, a whole new language? I hope that y'all are ready for this new, because there's a lot of new coming. We already experienced a lot of new as a whole, you know, as a collective. So those of you who are spiritual, that's a whole nother language. Those of you who have the ability to communicate in ways other than the spoken language, those of you who know who you are. And those of you who don't know who you are, you may have just been activated, but anyways. There are several conversations that happen within a conversation. And sometimes you can see with your eyes closed. And sometimes you can hear without actually listening to anything. Sometimes you just know things. Sometimes you can communicate with a coworker or a friend or something like that in a way that doesn't really have a definition. And I really want you guys to start tapping into that. I want you guys to start thinking about languages other than the one that you speak. The sounds that you make with your mouth while you're speaking is your own. It's like a thumbprint. The sounds that you make while you're talking the vibration that comes from your voice box. It's all unique to you. Mind you, AI can take that and alter it and all this other happy horseshit. But either way. <clears throat> you're
your authenticity is where the creation is going to come from. And you have to identify that yourself, within yourself. Um, some people say, like, today is a, a portal, a day 11-11. Um, it's a, some people call it like twin flaming. It's a lesson. So you need to learn in, and express yourself right now. And go outside of your box of comfort because you need to start recognizing who you want to be is who you already are. And today is a good day to write a letter to your future self telling your future self how awesome you are or from your future self to now. Um, an example being, uh, let me share a page here. I think this is it. Yeah. I have a lot of pages open right now. So <clears throat> this is from uh, education.com. It's a free site. Uh, you can pay for uh, extensions on that site, but I'm using the free part. Um, this is a fifth grade writing worksheet, but um, back to school writing prompts and a letter to your future self. This is um, this is what I'm talking about here. Sorry. Um, if you could imagine a perfect world, right? What would you be in that perfect world? Um, how would you communicate? How you communicate to yourself and how you commu communicate with other people may be different. So, um, and I know what I'm thinking and what I'm saying is two different things right now. Perfect example. Your brain can think one thing, and but the ability to communicate that thought is, is, a, is a journey in itself, let alone to be able to articulate it in a way that is accurate to your thought process. Then once it's said, to be able to receive that information accurately and efficiently from the other party, whoever it may be, y'all, um, is another feat in itself. Then it's on the other person's perception of how they received it. And it may vary immensely from what your th original thought process is like right now. This is as best as I can get of describing um, communication uh, for myself as well. So, um, so some people say that mirrors are portals, um, that you have a way to communicate with yourself whether it be it in your past or in your future through mirrors. Um, there, uh, the mirroring effect of 1111, meaning the portal or gateway um, to recognizing self, mirror, recognizing self, the skewed self because it's reversed. Like on here, um, for example, <clears throat> um, skewed self. Which one, which face are you used to seeing? Are you used to seeing this face or this face? Our brains recognize our mirror self skewed. So our perception of self is automatically skewed. In turn, causes the brain 
to react and defer said languages because of the fact that your own perception is reversed. So when you have a description of someone else, when you're describing someone else, you're actually describing yourself subconsciously. When you're angry or hurtful towards someone else, that's the pain releasing from you. So when you have, we have our, there's so many different ways to communicate and the languages come from different places. And I'm, I'm sorry if I'm like jumping all over the place and y'all can't keep up with me. Totally fine. Understandable. <laughs> I can't even keep up with myself half the time. So when you're trying to communicate with someone, it's not just the words that you're using. It's the body movement. It's the eye contact. It's the whatever expression you have on your face. It's they're receiving you in a way that you're not seeing. You're seeing yourself in one way the usual way, right? The usual way. You're seeing yourself the usual way. You're expressing yourself. You're thinking you're being super direct, right? You know exactly what you're thinking. You're expressing what you're thinking, and this is what it is. But the other person is seeing this. Blah, 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 blah. And then they're just like, they may or may not understand you. They may or may not understand your original thought because they're seeing it differently than you do. Not everyone is going to see or have the same vision as you. They're not going to be able to understand you completely. And that's okay. No one can understand everyone completely. Ever. We can't even understand ourselves completely. So give grace when you can, even on yourself. You know, when you send that letter to your old self or you send that letter to your future self or to your future generations or whoever, think about that <clears throat> perspective. <laughs> so I know I've done mess y'all up back and forth with the camera and stuff, but I'm trying to give a visual to what I'm explaining. Um, and I, I really don't even know how to write it out to explain it. And maybe it's a little more common sense than I think. I don't know how y'all are receiving this information. So, Jasnick, how are you? <laughs> I'm doing well. I hope you are. Big ass fucking cheese eating grin right now. It's awesome. hope you're doing good. <clears throat> so I could be all ripped this morning and then fuck up my throat. <laughs> <coughs> so what happens when you don't have drinks nearby. I have been. I've been. I've been here. I'm. I'm alive. So it counts, right? It counts. Um. So yeah. Uh, I'm just continuing doing like the homeschooling thing on here. Uh, we were talking yesterday about me starting doing the 10 a.m. stream, but the 10 p.m. stream, um, is uh, a little questionable right now. I'm not sure how I feel about that one. <laughs> um, news update. I don't know uh, if y'all have been keeping up with my social media or not, but I am engaged to be married next year. Uh, we haven't officially settled on a date yet. We originally settled on a specific date and then I realized, oh shit, that's my daughter's wedding date. So let's not do that. <laughs> yeah. So she was pretty pissed when she heard what date it was going to be. And then, uh, congratulations. <laughs> yes. Great. Anyway. So, 
Yep, I'm engaged. So I will be the future Mrs. Lowe. I'll meet Eve Lowe. <laughs> I'm about to change my name on everything. That's so crazy. I haven't been married in so long. I've been divorced for so long, y'all. I've been single for so long. Like, <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> I'm 42. I ain't getting any younger, you know? <laughs> I'm just playing. But, um, yeah. Yeah, he asked me on Halloween. So, thank you. Thank you very much. I'm excited. <laughs> So yeah, it's a uh, it's been an interesting interesting room. What the hell y'all been up to? I ain't seen any of my streamers on here. It's all new people. It's like uh, I don't know if everybody moved to different social media streaming or if they um, just don't do Twitch that much anymore. Maybe everybody got burnt out on it. I don't know. I don't see anybody on here anymore. Like even the afternoon, like right now would have been like people from overseas saying stuff and they're not on here. It's strange. Like how different it is now from like three years ago. Like Twitch was all the rage like the past two years. And like now it's, I just feel like there's a lot less people on here for some reason. At least the ones that used to come on here and talk. I don't know, maybe I'm just not consistently on here enough. That's probably most likely what the problem is. But, <clears throat> so yeah. It's been interesting, I'll say that. Um, I forgot what I was talking about now. Uh, see how languages. Um, okay. So going back to um, okay. So. <clears throat> We've already done the review Google Calendar, uh, which is this. It's just just talking about this. The workbooks I don't have, uh, worksheets I don't have. Websites are on the uh, About Me section uh, below. So, uh, what are we reading? Uh, it's um, Phantom of the Opera is one of them, and uh, Secret Garden. I'm gonna have to start that one over. Um, Questions next week, personal learning. What are there other what are other ways? What other ways are there to communicate? I think we kind of covered that already. How long can you go without talking? Well, clearly I can talk fucking long by myself. I have full on conversation, totally entertain myself, completely fine. As you guys know. <clears throat> without talking, I talk to myself, even when I'm by myself. So I don't know, maybe like an hour. Um, what is something you wish you could say, but feel like you can't, uh, really, there's a lot of things to be honest with you. Um, I want to tell my biological father exactly how I feel. But I feel like I can't because I've never met him. But um, anyway, so, <laughs> um, what do you want to say to your younger self? Pull the trigger. Um, do you know how to communicate your feelings, or do you feel like you can't? Yes and no. I feel like I can communicate for the most part, but there's a lot of my own brain and my own emotions that I do not understand how to communicate properly. Um. <clears throat> 
how has language evolved in history? We were talking a lot earlier about like Babel and the fall of Babel and um, how we at one point were all one land and then we dispersed. But going back to the transference from Earth to Mars, based on that knowledge, if we've already previously done this before and it was a government operated device that brought us to this planet, which would explain the missing link issue, um, then we would have an entirety of um, I lost it. I hate that. I hate that so much. I'll be in the middle of like talking and I'll forget what I was talking about. Um, Oh, maybe I wasn't meant to say it right now. <clears throat> um, how can we communicate to better understand each other? Um, say exactly as close as possible to exactly what you're thinking or how you're feeling. As close as you possibly can. And without worry of what the other person is going to feel or say or anything. Because... That really, that clear, commu clear cut communication, even though it's offensive, it's offensive because it's triggering something inside of you to heal. So this way you can communicate better with the person that was communicating you with you in the first place. If I'm sitting here and I'm speaking my truth to you and it's triggering you in a way that is causing you to become emotionally unstable, then that's something that you need to ask yourself of. Why are you feeling like this? It's not me. It's you at that point. So, <clears throat> and the same thing in reverse. If somebody is talking to me and I'm getting offended or I'm feeling all of a sudden all these extreme feelings, I have to ask myself, why am I feeling like this when all they're trying to do is just talk to me? Especially if they're not yelling at me, if they're not cursing at me or pushing a topic onto me, then why do I feel a specific way about a conversation? Even if it's something that's meant to enhance your current status, like someone trying to give you advice or giving you a different opinion about something or a different perspective of something. It's not meant to piss you off. It's meant to show you that they're, to show you an open mind, excuse me, view of everything. Um, and once you're able to start doing that, you'll start to see that even though, yeah, it kind of does make you vulnerable, but it also makes you recognize your own weaknesses. And then once you're able to recognize your weaknesses, that's when you start to grow because you're only as strong as your weaknesses. And I know a lot of people are going to hear that and they're gonna be like, oh my God, no, you are. And the only way that you're going to get better or get past this is if you start working on yourself. So, <clears throat> um, does talking make you feel better afterwards? Sometimes it does for me. Sometimes it does. Sometimes I ruminate on the conversation a little too much. I'll be honest. And sometimes a conversation tends to stick in, certain words and conversations tend to stick in my mind for like decades. So, um, and I'm not going to say that any one person is living rent free in my head, but there are certain things that were said in my lifetime that I will never forget. So, even though I forget my conversations half the time. So, <laughs> Sing it. Okay. So I've been live for an hour on this one. <clears throat> I'm going to probably switch, go ahead and switch over to tomorrow's, which is numbers. Well, no, not numbers. I already did numbers. I need to go back and do Wednesdays, which is history. I need to make up for last week. Um, these set of streams, if you're watching them as I'm uploading them to YouTube, 
Um, they're going to be out of order. Just fair warning. They're going to be out of order. Um, until I can get a cycle going of this because I'm not used to it. And I'm just starting to do the... Um, once I'm done with the stream, then going back and exporting it to YouTube or whatever other said streaming service. Um, oh, that's what I was going to do. Damn it. I was going to do that for this session. Hmm. Okay, well, I'm going to um, actually do something different in this next stream. Uh, we're going to see how this works because it's, it's going to be interesting. I'm going to have two setups here. You know, we went away from TV and we went to streaming and now streaming is like TV. So. <clears throat> you only get 10 seconds on my stream. <laughs> Anyway, um, so I was thinking about multi-streaming again, um, and I'm going to have to look at some multi-streaming apps. That include what websites go live or what apps go live. So I want to say, I know Twitch does. Kick, Facebook. YouTube, TikTok, um, Instagram, those are the main ones that I know of. If I'm missing any, let me know because I want to go live on all of them. I think that's it. I think you can go live on Patreon too. Now for the uh, 18 plus, the OF, one and two, Thansley, Fat. I don't think you can go live on FET. Um, chat. Mm, Jmate. Seabait, pH, and it's the only ones I can think of right now. Yeah, it's all the ones I can think of right now. So, <clears throat> those are the ones I'm going to start with. Um, not sure what the rules are for the other ones, but I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to do it. 
So and I already updated it. That's another thing too. Like I update stuff all the time and it does not update properly. I don't understand that. I went ahead and deleted so much stuff off my phone. Oh, happy Veterans Day, by the way. I totally forgot until I just seen it. <laughs> it's funny. I guess I should have done history today. I guess I'll do that next. Anyway. All right. That's it for this stream. So I'm going to click off for this one. But uh, just keep your eyes posted. And your heart open. Your mind open. And your third eye open. So <laughs> y'all have a good day and behave.